Hello and welcome back to the Summer Day Studios YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at something called triplanar projection. And this relates to texturing and shading in Maya with Arnold. What this will involve is basically looking at how we can use uh, texture files like uh, image maps, like PNGs or JPEG files to procedurally texture a model. And that sounds somewhat counter to what you'd think, right? You think uh, texture maps, well, you can't really do that procedurally, you need UVs. Um, but actually, there is a way that we can make it usable without UVs. And someone had asked how uh, we can use, one of our viewers had asked how you can use texture maps to um, procedurally texture something. So we're going to be taking a look at that with triplanar projection. And yes, we are going to be using texture maps, but you don't actually need any UVs whatsoever. This will work on any model that you have. I just have this kind of weird amalgamation Boolean monstrosity, um, but it'll be a good demonstration for how this is going to work. So take your model, uh, and as always, I'm going to start off with a light. Um, I'm just going to use a sky dome light. We're not going to use a, an HDRI today. Um, so use whatever light you'd like. This is just for demonstration purposes today. Okay, so once you've got a light in your scene, uh, hold down right click, go to assign new material. And again, we're going to use an AI open PBR surface, but this will work with a standard surface as well. This is just a newer format. So we'll use that. And then we're going to open up our trusty hypershade editor with this little blue ball up here. Um, select your new material. You'll see it up here, AI open PBR surface. And then we'll just press this button here to graph it so we can see it. I always like to rename things um, as soon as I make them just to keep track of things. So I'm just going to call this shader 01 or something like that. You can call it whatever you like just to keep track. And I have this nice brick texture here, which I'm going to use. Um, and I want to take the color for the time being. So I'm just going to copy that file path. Um, press tab while you're in the graph and then type in file. And we're going to take a file texture node. And we're going to go ahead to the image name on the right hand side and press this little file icon. We're then going to navigate to where our texture is and you can use whatever you like. This uh, I'm going to take the diffuse or color. And we're just going to go ahead and plug the color of this into the base color. All right. And then we'll go ahead and render that and just see what that looks like. So you can see now that we're rendering the texture is applied, but it looks absolutely horrendous. It's getting stretched on the top. Um, it's kind of curving in odd ways on the front here and it's not really working as it should right it's not conforming around as you'd expect on like a building for example and that's if we look at the UVs you can see here I've just done a camera based projection the UVs here aren't correct whatsoever so this isn't going to work so how can we make this work procedurally without having to do any UVs so if we just pause that render for a bit go back to viewport 2.0 and come back to the hypershade editor we're going to unplug the color from our material for the time being and just move that out of the way for later. I'm going to press tab again and we're going to type in tri planar. You're looking for this node here called AI tri planar. And again, AI doesn't stand for artificial intelligence. It's just to do with Arnold, the render engine. So what this will do essentially is it will procedurally map our texture file onto our model. And I'll explain how that works in a moment. If you take the out color and plug that into the input, and then take the out color of the triplanar node and plug that into the base color instead. So we just have this triplanar node sitting between our color, our PNG image texture, and our shader base color. If we come back and render this again, you can see the scale of the texture has changed quite a lot, but it's now projecting in the way you'd expect as if we had UVs on there. There's no stretching, everything's going in the right direction. We've got brick on top brick on the sides it's even curving quite nicely around this cylinder element and then going straight across on the caps too so how exactly is that working triplanar projection in its simplest form is essentially just a 3d texturing technique that projects a material onto a mesh from three axes so x y and z instead of actually relying on objects uh, uvs because we don't have any um, and it creates free texture projections and then sort of blends them together at the seams, which you can see, as you can see is what's happening here, right? It's blended together at the seams. It looks like we have UVs, but again, as we checked earlier, we don't. We're just using that triplanar projection node. We can even go ahead and while we have the triplanar node selected, adjust things like scale. You can see here we're getting quite a lot of bricks, so this looks like quite a large uh, building. We could potentially reduce this down to something like 0 0.3 and just make sure you have that in all three sections here. We're now getting a much larger brick texture, but again, it's just seamlessly being projected from those three axes, so we're getting this nice, even appearance to it. 
If you're not happy with the uh, seams of your model looking a bit too harsh, you can even increase the blend amount here. By default, it's at zero. If I was to put that up to one, you can see that just smooths out. You can see it especially here. If I was to put that at zero, there's a seam here quite noticeably as if we had a UV seam. But obviously, we don't have UVs. It's just an, a quirk of the triplanar projection. It's not perfect, but for quick results like this, it's fantastic. If I was just to put the blend up to one, you can see now that sort of removes that uh, seam just by blending between the two. And this will work more or less pretty well. It would depend on your texture file, so your mileage might vary. Um, but you can see what incredible results you can get just by putting in one node. We didn't have to spend any time at all UVing this, and you can save yourselves a lot of time. Um, I wouldn't recommend using this on really, really hero, close to the screen assets if you wanted to do something for a portfolio. But certainly for something you want to texture quickly, or where you don't really, uh, you're not really necessarily worried about hand painting any texture details, much like with the other procedural method we did in another video with noise textures, then this is perfect for um, achieving quick re and good looking results. You can even use this for the roughness and normal maps as well. If I were to go ahead and create another texture map here, and in this case, instead of the color, we take the normal map, like so. And then we just copy our triplanar map, Control D while in the graph editor. And we're gonna plug this in the exact same way we did with the color, and again, this time, though, we need to plug this into a AI normal map, like you would normally with a normal map. The only difference here being that the triplanar sits between your image texture and the final input. Okay, so we'll plug the out color into the input and then the out value into the normal. And we'll just let that update. And you can see we're now getting our normal map as well. And we could do the exact same for the roughness too. So you can see how powerful this is just to very, very quickly and easily create pretty convincing uh, textures um, with just an image file and a triplanar projection. It does work best generally on more angular surfaces. It kind of has issues with spherical surfaces. It can work pretty well on cylindrical surfaces as you can see here and blends quite well between the two. But try this out, practice it, um, see what you can create and uh, I hope this was helpful. So this is how you can use texture maps to procedurally texture your models. Um, yeah, I hope it's been helpful. If you have any questions at all, please do let me know. I'd be happy to answer them. And um, also, I'd like to hear from you guys as well what you'd like to see next. There's been a lot of people saying they'd like to see more material videos, and I really like creating those. I think it's an interesting topic, and I know a lot of people are intimidated by the Hypershade editor and struggle with it. Um, so I'd love to, to help you guys out with that. And uh, yeah, like I said, if you have any suggestions, please let me know, and I'll make a video on it. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.